Okay. We're going to we're going to call the meeting to order. Uh, I'm going to say that we have a quorum of five. And look for a motion. I'd like to motion we excuse Ms. Lisa Glover Jones and Mr. Rob Eaton. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Ms. Enriquez Pimmer? Yes. Dr. Alvin Wilson? Yes. Ms. Lotus? Yes. Mr. Gardner? Yes. Now vote yes. Next up is the adoption of the agenda. I'd like to motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Second. Motion and a second. Ms. Lonis? Yes. Ms. Garden? Yes. Dr. Alan Wilson? Yes. Ms. Enriquez Pimple? Yes. And I shall vote yes. We now have an agenda and we move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have any volunteers? Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> None. Okay, well, we'll come, we'll come down there and find some. All the kiddos, come on up. Are you coming up too? You come up. Come up. Come on up. Come on up. You guys stand. Oh, everybody, get up here in front. Okay, right in here is great. So the flag is over here. So we need to have everybody face this way. Everybody face me. Hey, do we have all the Booter and Marion students here? If you're a Booter or Marion student, come on up front to lead us in the pledge. Okay. On the count of three, you all will start us off. One, two, three. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job. All right. All right. Okay. Got to hand out, we got to hand out some certificates here. You did a wonderful Here, young lady. Oh, wait a minute. No. And so proud of you. Well, she's also taller. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> okay, we want to make sure nobody gets, Dr. Go. Thomas has some too. Well, you got yours? Did you get one? Is there original copy? Mm -hmm. Does everybody have one? Yeah. Okay. Did you think oh, this is okay. This is good. We can do that. Miss Lotus reminded me that we got to have all the kids come up from Booter and then from Marion. So if any parents, feel free to come up here, behind us, around here, wherever you want to be, and take pictures, videos, whatever you want. Don't don't feel like you got to sit back there because you're going to see their back. So if you want to come on up, come on. She said Mary and Who wants this, sir? Oh, she said Mary and Judy. 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 Mary and Okay, ladies and gentlemen, first school of the month is, is Booter, is this right? Is that the rumor? Okay, and did you guys, did you happen to bring your principal on with you? Yes. Yeah, is she around? Okay, let's call her up here. Dr. Frank. Dr. Frank. There she is. Hi. Mr. West, Ms. Forsey, you guys can come up. I thought you guys were taking a picture. Okay, so good evening. I am Dr. Frank. I am the principal of Buddha Elementary School. This is Ms. Forsey. She is a second grade teacher. This is Mr. Warren West. He is the assistant principal. This is Shania Williams. She is the co-president of student council. 
This is Mason Newingham. He is the Vice President of Student Council. This is Michelle Salvador Morales. She is a fourth grade representative on Student Council. This is Tamara Beach. She is a third grade representative on Student Council. And then we have two second grade students from Ms. Forsey's room, Tracy Bowens. And then this is Isabel Clark. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Ridner School District, in partnership with parents and community, will develop leaders recognized for academic excellence and produce graduates who become productive citizens and lead lives of personal integrity and fulfillment. Right. Um, some of the parents still have folders for students. Can someone bring Shania's folder up here and Michelle's folder? Thank you. Sorry about that. Michelle, do you have your folder? Go get your folder. The mission. Testing, testing. <laughs> okay. The mission. The mission of Ringer School District is to ensure learning occurs in a supportive environment that enables every student to think critically, solve problems, and develop the knowledge and skills necessary for success in our diverse global society. And now for the equity statement. We will treat everyone, parents, students, staff, families, with <laughs> students with special needs, guests with dignity and respect by valuing individual perspectives and cultural diversity. We will prioritize our interactions with every parent, student, guest, and colleague, providing a welcoming environment and immediate greeting with every stakeholder, student, staff, parents, etc., enter our spaces. So our agenda, we are going to highlight celebrations, go over some student survey results, then talk about parent engagement, and then next steps. Saving it. Third place in the homecoming grade. So here are some student <laughs> survey data results. We're going to focus on four categories in our presentation today. We're going to talk about engagement, school climate, sense of belonging, and teacher-student relationships. So we will go over the average percentage and then things that we are doing at Boulder to work on increasing these percentages. So this is a reflection of our data in the fall of 2023. Our students are taking the survey again this week, and our hope is that we see the percentages increase based on what we are putting in place. So how was the data shared? So the fall data was shared with the social emotional team. We analyzed the data, and then we discussed ways to share it with the staff members. And then at a staff meeting, we had the staff members look at the data, highlight strengths, and areas of opportunity. We also had them select playbook strategies to address areas of need. So staff members picked out strategies to address sense of belonging, to address climate. So again, those were things that they were looking at and then they also let the social emotional team know what they needed support in. We also shared the information with our student council members and they were also able to give input. This is a picture of our amazing social emotional team at Booter. So here, we highlight 73% um, of our students feel that we have positive teacher-student relationships at Booter Elementary School. Here are some things we are doing to see this continue to increase. We have morning meetings, goal setting. Ms. Forsey will talk more about small groups um, later on in the presentation. After specials, we sit down and do our question of the day. We talk about it, then we do zones check-in. We talk about how we are feeling, we talk about anything that happened that we are excited about or what made us disappointed or what we're looking forward to. Our teacher will make sure that we are all right. So Shania was talking about morning meetings and now Tamara is going to talk about goal setting. Goal setting. My teacher shares our progress with us so we know where we are at on 
the professor says still. I like to set goals for myself because I want to be higher in math and reading. I use the professor says still to determine my current level of understanding and where I need to go. So now we're going to talk about sense of belonging and then we're going to talk about what we're doing as a, as a building to see this percentage increase. So currently we have newcomers club in place at Booter. So anyone that is new to Booter, our social worker meets with them once a week. She gives them a tour of the school. She goes over our Booter values. She also connects them with a student ambassador to make sure that they feel connected. We're going to have a few friends share with us more about student council, Booter buddies, and quarterly events. I've already spoke about playbook strategies. <laughs> student council is a good way for students to express their thoughts to teachers and principals. Since being on student council, I feel more confident and I enjoy yeah. coming to school every day. Student council, it is nice to be able to sit around with new people and get to know them. It is nice. We get to talk about our ideas and fun events we can do. Booter Buddies are fun to interact with the younger kids in other grades. When I see my Booter Buddy at lunch, they get excited to see me. In October, we here at Booter host a fall fest for all the students to come here and have fun. There will be cars giving out candies to students. Once they are finished, there will be games for them to play. Went to Wonderland was fun. We were able to interact with other friends and family. We were able to play games and learn more things. This is a photo of our current um, student council members. Some of them could not make it, but definitely wanted to display them. So now we'll talk about school climate. 55% of our students um, is where our school climate is right now. We It is an area of opportunity uh, growth for us. So. Some of the things that we're doing when I have morning announcements, I talk about our top three attendance uh, winners, our top attendance winners, we take a picture, they have trophies. We also have staff of the week kind of to help boost that morale, um, as well as student of the week. I was proud and happy when I was student of the week. I had to show respect. School attendance. On every Monday, Mr. West announces over the intercom which class will be attendance for last week. If you win first place <coughs> later in the day, they will drop off a trophy and take a picture of the class to celebrate. Engagement is another area of ours that some, we have a, um, some room to grow, which is a great thing to have an opportunity to get better. Uh, we're at 56% right now. Here's some things that we are doing to increase, increase our engagement. Hello. Um, we do quarterly um, walkthroughs as teams. We go into the different classrooms and learn from our peers. And the second grade team went into the classrooms and saw an opportunity to implement CBL into the classroom. What we do as a team is we get our data together of the reading levels and we have organized them so we are able to meet with every group every day. So currently I am seeing four groups. I see Isabel's group and Tracy's group and a couple others. We get together as a team. We um, look at the proficiency scales and we see how we can make growth as a grade level. And this really helps with that um, sense of belonging because all the kids know all of us. And sometimes like Isabel went to one teacher before and now she's back to me. Um, we plan as a team and so we're very purposeful with how we have the groups in all areas. And we also connect this to evaluate because we're constantly going over that in our groups and making sure we're hitting our goals. So the admin team goes to different grades and we check in with students. We make sure that we're setting 10 to 15% growth data goals per their evaluate data in math and ELA. And then we come back after the test to celebrate with them for those who have met their goals and for those who have made growth. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Learning to evaluate carpet helped because on this test in ELA, I had to do this again and prepare me for different passages. 
Okay, so here you can see that um, we have Evaluate Prep, and so as a team, every Friday, we go over a part of the Evaluate that we think our students need a little extra help in and can make gains in, and then we talk about that and we set goals through that, and um, this one was for um, basically purpose of the text, and actually Isabel was the one on the test. She goes, oh my gosh, we just did this, we talked about this, so we're making those connections constantly. The whole class works together to set goals and complete them. Sometimes we don't reach the goal, but we try again. The proficiency scale helps us get higher scores and learn new things. It also helps us prepare for other skills and other skills related to it. Data well is a place where we can keep track of our class goals and data. The questions of the week are similar to evaluate and help prepare us. The proficiency scale helps us learn where we are at and where we want to go. Okay. Hi. Next one is was telling me that I was making progress on the language test. He asked me what do I think my next score will be. I told him I will improve more. I'm proud to say that I'm a 10% growth in math. Evaluate. Dr. Frank met with me to, re to review my evaluate <coughs> score. We set a goal for my January test that I felt comfortable with. I am proud to say that I could exceed my 10 to 15 percent goal on ELA and math. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the must do are certain things we have to do first in their own level, and the players are prepared for the next two so for parent engagement, we have monthly PTO meetings, and we also have Smart Parents Do This workshop. This is something new at Booter this year. So our events are well attended. So we paired this workshop during our Winter Wonderland, and the first session we focused on sleep, we focused on space, and we focused on supplies, and we just gave parents resources to help them develop sleep routines with their children to make sure that they are getting good rest so that they are ready to learn each and every day. Our second part of Smart Parents Do This was paired with our STEM night, and there the parents talked about supervision, they talked about support, and they talked about structure. So during that session, they were able to create afternoon schedules, talk about what that transition from home to school looks like, also talked about the importance of family meals, and also making sure they're monitoring their students' technology usage, and also having them earn um, technology instead of overusing. Quarterly events is something we already spoke to, and then also monthly newsletters are ways to continue to engage our families. These are some pictures to highlight. Um, you see some of the parents with their certificates because they completed the Smart Parents Do This workshop, and then you also see a parent with the red cups that was at our STEM night. This is our wonderful Booter staff. More pictures from our parent events. Another picture of Booter. And then next steps, we will look at our data results. Students are finishing up the survey this week. We will analyze the data and make informed decisions with student council and our social emotional team. And we will continue to monitor the data. Booter. Bobcats. Booter. Bobcats. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. I know we got a lot of parents standing up, but can we have the parents stand up, wave, let us know that you're Booter parents? Okay, next, next on deck is the uh, next school of the month from Marion. Marion.
Hi, I. Push it up. Oh, my God. Yeah, I did that. I did that. Oh, okay. All right. My name is Lisa Broadbent, and I am the principal of Marion Elementary. Um, tonight, we also have uh, Melissa Crowley, and she is the assistant principal in Marion. Um, we are here tonight with some of Miss Johnson's fifth grade students. Now, our fifth grade Miss Johnson unfortunately got very sick, so she could not come. The great news is, is that we have her mom teaching third grade right down the hall. So, Miss Johnson's fifth grade students finally, finally refer to her as Mama Johnson. So, Mama Johnson is here to fill in for uh, Mrs. Johnson tonight. So, we also have uh, Damian Adams, Ashley Anmelez Garcia, Caspian Canas, Bianca Van Well, Darian Vincent. Erilyn Viswet Franco and Saray Wilkes with us tonight from Miss Johnson's class. Is the clicker All right, so we're going to start with our vision. River School District, in partnership with parents, community, and community, will develop leaders recognized for academic excellence and produce graduates who will become productive citizens and lead lives of personal integrity and fulfillment. The mission of the Rittner School District is to ensure that learning occurs in a supportive environment that enables every student to think critically, solve problems, and develop the knowledge and skills necessary to, for success in our diverse and global society. Also tonight our presentation really refers to number seven of our equity statement in that we invest and engage students in their own learning by supporting student and teacher advocacy. So tonight, Ms. Johnson's students are going to be talking about math discourse. That's been an important focus of Marion. Through our work with competency-based learning, we know that students talking about their learning, understanding where they are at as a learner and where they need to go is such an important part of their learning. So they are going to model how this works for math. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Camelia Johnson, and I'm a third grade teacher at Marion Elementary, and as she stated, my daughter, Taylor Johnson, is a fifth grade teacher at Marion, and this, these are her wonderful students that refer to me as Mother Johnson, so I, <laughs> of course, was happy to step in for her. She was supposed to be here tonight, but she was unfortunately sick, and she still wanted to be here, but her mother made her stay home. <laughs> So I am very honored to step up and share with you some of her and her students' successes with math discourse. I'm proud of Ms. Taylor Johnson and her students. The ownership that her students show centered, um, I'm sorry, this, the ownership that her students show centered around becoming better mathematicians is remarkable. This type of work is indicative of work that that we all do at Marion. Math discourse is centered around strong conversations about mathematics with high level vocabulary. An example of this will be shown during today's student demonstration. Students will be comparing the standard algorithm to the partial product diagram. Some of you may know this as the box method. However, we will refer to this method using our high vocabulary skills. During the presentation, students will show how they use math discourse in combination with the proficiency scales to take ownership of their own learning. In our classroom, when we are getting ready to learn a new scale, Ms. Johnson introduces us to the scale. As a class, we each create our own student-facing scales and track our learning. As you can see, on the next slide. The scale that we are going uh, we can mm -hmm. the scale that we are going to be talking about tonight is scale five seven multiplying whole numbers in decimal. The lesson was a three point oh level test because we use we are, we were using multiplication strategies and multiplying two by three digit numbers. As we learn throughout the school year, we mark our growth on the learning progression charts, which we keep in front of our CLB binder. 
in addition to learning progression and student facing skills, we keep evidence of our learning and tasks that we have completed or are still working on in the CGL model. And I think the key to something that Ashley said is they're given a problem in multiple ways. That's a big part of this as well. So on this slide, you see a high quality math task. This is part one of it. Take turns picking out a set of expressions that are equal to 245 times 35 when added together. Use the diagrams if they are helpful. Explain how you know the sum of your expressions is equal to 245 times 35. What is the value of 245 times 35? Explain or show your reasoning. And that last part is huge, the explaining and showing your reasoning. First off, I did a partial product diagram because it was part of the lesson. First, I broke up the number by place value, and then I multiplied the numbers starting with the hundreds in the table, then the tens and ones. Then I moved down to the bottom row and multiplied the hundreds, tens, and ones. After we have the product, so we have to add all the numbers to find the total product. I also did the partial product diagram. When I multiplied, I listed the answers to it at the end. What answer did you get? I got 8,575. Same. Me too. And they work in partnerships a lot like that as well. High quality math, math task two. There's Andre and Claire. How are Andre and Claire's strategies the same? How are they different? Create a list of equations to match the partial products Andre and Claire found. They are the same because they both signed out the problem with 245 on top and multiplied it by 35. Claire uses zero to hold the place values, but Andre multiplied the four hundreds, tens, and ones. Claire did not carry the place value, but wrote them at the bottom in the whole number they How was, how has being a part of a class with high math discourse helped you learn math? How has it helped you? <coughs> math discourse helps me learn math because I get to talk to others and get help from other classmates. Everyone thinks and learns differently, but when we talk about our learning together, more eyes are going to be Math discourse helped helps me learn in math because it gives me more information and resources by talking to my classmates alone. Without math this course, I probably wouldn't learn a lot. When I talk with my friends, if I don't understand something, they can help me stay through the problem. So talking with a person next to me can help me get the right answer and it helps you talk about it. Math discourse helps me learn math because it gives me more it helps me think like a mathematician and and a math maker. Talking about math helps me feel less stressed and understand my math better. It helps me feel more confident as a student. And thank you all for coming here. <laughs> And so, you know, aside from all the important reasons that Ms. Johnson's student gave for um, why it is so important, we also did want to show some data. Um, we're definitely seeing some growth um, as a result of the math discourse, and we look forward to the growth that's still to come this year because um, of the students just talking at high levels about their understanding of math. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you.
so, so, so as, as the kids leave and everything, can we have the parents wait <laughs> stand up? excited to celebrate with our students, our staff and families in our community. Ritter students and staff members have a variety of classroom and school-based activities planned throughout the month to recognize the importance and the significance of Black History Month. Throughout the month, all Ritter students will participate in projects that will broaden their knowledge and about influential African Americans. Look forward to hearing about that too. Mr. Superintendent. Our schools are having special morning announcements to increase awareness and appreciation of black excellence in history. Art projects, door decoration contests, spirit weeks, student performances, and guest speakers are among the many events planned to spotlight famous black scientists, authors, athletes, civic leaders, change makers, and many more. We are proud of our students and our staff and our schools. Be sure to check out the Rittner website and social media channels throughout the month of February for the latest news and upcoming events at all of our schools. And that concludes the President's report for February 8th. Moving on to the Superintendent's report. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Uh, so board members were excited for our annual kindergarten kickoff. It's on the 22nd of February. Uh, it's going to be in the lower lobby over at Rittner High School. Families with children entering kindergarten uh, are that are going to be entering kindergarten this upcoming fall. We're going to welcome them on the 22nd. It's the class of 2037. Uh, please uh, mark this event in your calendar. Uh, it's going to be from 5 to 6 30. Uh, we're going to have kindergarten teachers from all six schools. We'll also have principals, assistant principals, and counselors from the schools. We'll also have central office team and board members. There'll be a board of education table. Uh, we've got pencils that board members can hand out. It'll be a great way to not only connect with the incoming class 2037, but uh, connect with the newest members, the newest families uh, here in the Rittner community. Uh, incoming kindergarten students are encouraged to attend with families. Uh, there will be attendance prizes. Uh, there will also be kindergarten readiness materials for every child that comes. Uh, as a reminder, in order to enroll in kindergarten uh, for the uh, class of 2037, students must be five years old on or before July 31st, 2024, in order to enter kindergarten this fall. Can't wait to welcome our newest students and our newest families. That concludes my report. Thank you very much, sir. Moving on to our student representative report, Ms. Hope. Oh. Um, so we're going to be walking around on Monday, 
parents, they sit in eighth hour to talk to the different classes with the juniors in it, to um, advertise that the student representative position is going to be open soon. Um, RHS has been quiet, <laughs> so there hasn't been a lot of like problems and stuff recently. Uh, there's been advertising for a blood drive, which is going to happen the 22nd, I believe. Um, they also are advertising for the glow dance. They have been starting fundraisers and stuff, like clubs have. For example, the American Sign Language Club has started some lollipops. Um, basketball season has been happening, and so the band has been playing, and uh, our teams have been doing really good. Last week before the board meeting, I was at the girls' basketball game, and we won like 70 to 20. Um, I would encourage you guys to come to like the girls' basketball games because we need more people there. Uh, there wasn't a lot of people there, um, and there's a girls' basketball game this Friday. Uh, there's not very many concerns, and it's been good. So that's the cafeteria. So much better. The lines have been moving so much more fast. Like they have it where all the foods are served in each line, whereas before there was only one type of food in each line, so one line would always get clogged. And it's been moving much quicker. So it's been nice. And then people really like the booths and stuff, really enjoying it. So that concludes my report. Thank you very much. It's good to hear that our high school is quiet. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully it stays that way, right? Cross our fingers. Yeah. Okay, the next report is from our MSBA, NSBA representative. Hello. We can start off with our video. You want to start off with the video? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. February edition of the Missouri School Boards Association Board. We begin with a look back at the governor's state of the state address last month. On January 24th, Governor Parson delivered his annual State of the State Address, which laid out his legislative agenda. Putting people first was the theme of Governor Parson's address. His annual speech to the state legislature marks his final one as Missouri's 57th governor. Education was once again a focus. During his speech, the governor detailed the progress his administration has made in education funding, teacher pay, and workforce development. And this year, as we propose our final priorities as governor, there is no turning back. We know that guaranteeing Missouri's strong foundation starts with a quality education in our children. This year, we will once again fully fund the K-12 foundation formula with an additional $120 million over last year's level, and we will also fully fund transportation across the state of Missouri. In addition to fully funding the Education Foundation formula, the governor also wants a $4 million increase in state funding to boost teacher pay. This year, to do our part on teacher pay, we are including funding to increase teacher pay baseline, increase teacher baseline pay to $40,000 per year. This represents a $15,000 increase for teacher pay during our administration. There are many other issues being considered in the current session of the General Assembly that are of great interest to MSBA and school board members throughout the state. As the legislative session progresses, we will keep you updated on the developments again this year through our legislative voice newsletter sent to members via email each Friday during the session, through critical issue alerts and periodic webinars. We urge you to stay in contact with your legislators during the session and communicate to them the impact legislation will have on your school district. Don't miss your chance to visit your legislator at the Capitol during MSBA's Advocacy Day. Known formerly as Legislative Forum, Advocacy Day is scheduled for April 9th in Jefferson City. The event will be preceded by a spring virtual meeting on March 13th and lunch and learn sessions on Fridays to provide legislative updates on the issues that matter to you. Check the MSBA website for registration information for all of these events. MSBA is also pleased to sponsor School Board Recognition Month in March, as proclaimed by Governor Parson. 
it's a great opportunity for school districts and communities to recognize the great work of school board members and the important role local boards of education play as leaders of our public schools. Visit the MSBA website for ideas to celebrate and materials created to help recognize the important contributions of these men and women and focus attention on the vital role these public officials play in the education of Missouri's children. On January 29th, a webinar co-presented by the Missouri School Boards Association, the Missouri Association of Counties, and the Missouri Municipal League was held to educate attendees on the challenges posed by artificial intelligence and how it might impact local elections. Speakers discussed how AI tools, specifically deep fakes, are being used to shape public opinion and impact the democratic process. MSBA Executive Director Melissa Randall said that although misinformation in elections isn't new, AI takes it to another level. We do have some concerns, like you, with our candidates um, being subjected to some uh, misinformation and disinformation that's generated by AI. Now that's not something new. Well, we all know sitting at this table there has been a lot of disinformation, especially in recent years, has been circulated um, to impact elections, especially local elections. But AI is going to take that to another level, as you both have already reflected on, and it's going to impact school boards just like it is both of your uh, memberships. And so, again, emphasize the importance of us working together to educate our communities about what is a deep fake, what is, or how can you do a better job of identifying misinformation and disinformation, whether or not it's generated by AI. We ought to all be uh, tethered to the truth instead of trying to be influenced by stuff that isn't accurate or isn't uh, factual. The webinar also featured presentations that provided an introduction to AI, a cybersecurity overview, and legal considerations. To view the archived recording of this webinar, visit the AI resources page on the MSBA website. And finally, John McDonald's Center for Education Safety Team will host a two-day Behavioral Risk Assessment Summit for K-12 School Threat Management on March 6th and 7th in Columbia. This is an amazing opportunity for individuals and school leadership teams to learn from the leading experts in school safety. I've supported the response and recovery of seven school shootings in my career. And I can't emphasize enough the importance of the summit. Our schools continue to see an increase in threats at an alarming rate. Classroom behaviors continue to challenge the learning environment. We can change this trend. We can fix these issues. From prevention to behavioral risk assessment, from threat management to understanding the current trends in school violence, this conference will give you the tools to help make a difference in your community. If your school team has yet to receive basic behavioral risk assessment training, a free pre-conference training day will be available on March 5th. Visit the MSPA website for more details. That's it for this month. Thanks for allowing us to have some time at your board meeting, and we'll see you in March for the next MSBA board report. Okay, thank you. Um, so just, I don't have a ton of updates, just a couple. I wanted to, again, thank Dr. Kilbride for sending out the email about um, the open enrollment bill. So I did, uh, I sent you all the copy of the email that I sent and then I also um, spoke with Representative Mackey um, on Tuesday, actually, saw him in person. Um, so definitely have some follow-up thoughts and things that I think we can talk about later. But um, yeah, definitely something we need to keep an eye on. And I would highly recommend you all reach out to him as well, because uh, he was not aware that you represented a uh, Rittner School District. So let's just keep an eye on that. Um, but in other news, I did also schedule, um, while I was at the Capitol on Tuesday, I went in to see our friendly uh, Doug Clemens and was able to get him on the schedule um, in two Fridays from now. So he, I would like to take him on a tour of the International Welcome Center. So I will kind of coordinate that with you, Dr. Fulbright, and probably um, Julie. Um, but he is scheduled to come in and visit and trying to get uh, Representative Wyndham to come in and visit as well. Wyndham is like slammed right now with a lot of, even, you know, pretty busy, but hoping to get him in as well to take a tour. Um, so there's that. Um, and I did just want to bring to your attention there is, so there are some good 
things happening um, as far as trying to get early childhood funding. Um, there's a coalition that I'm a part of called Kids Win Missouri, and they do a lot of really good work across the state. And so they're going to have an early uh, a childhood advocacy day on March 6th. So um, it's a little bit ahead of our day, and so I think it would be good if you, if you have the capacity to go. I think it'd be a great opportunity, one, to go and meet other advocates who are advocating for children, specifically early childhood, um, but then also, like I did on Tuesday, kind of take advantage and be able to go in and maybe see some other representatives, and then we have that full month that we can say, oh, we're going to be back <laughs> to have a conversation um, and just ensure that they're voting the way that we that we think is best for kids. So I'm going to send you that link uh, for you to sign up. I'm I'm going to go, so I'm happy to you know carpool or, or drive. Um, again, that's uh, I believe it's a Tuesday, March 6th. So I will send you that link to sign up. Those are all my updates. Thank you very much. That's, yep. that's, that's a lot. <laughs> okay. Moving on to uh, 2.5 is our special school district report. And with Mr. Rob Eaton out here, we will yield to Dr. Alvin Woods. Good evening. Um, Mr. Eaton, uh, the governing council member, was going to present a report with Nathan Dwyer, and I'm sure we will follow up on that. And the next governing council meeting is coming up soon. It's scheduled for March the 4th at 7 o'clock. 2024, so that'll be coming up. So that pretty much concludes my report, but everything seems to be doing pretty good. Right, Angie? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, we'll move to our business items. 3.1 is first reading of policy ADF. Dr. Kilburn. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. So board members, when we have new policy that is not on the books, uh, we have a first reading, second reading, and approval process. In the work session last week, shared with you uh, two edits that are going to be coming to you on the consent agenda. Uh, the edits are policy IGAB. Uh, the coding for MSBA, the MSBA coding, changes from time to time. Uh, so our policy IGAB is now focused on instructional intervention. In the past, it was focused on the district wellness program. New coding policy ADF, this is the language of, for policy around the district wellness program. The district will establish a wellness committee uh, that consists of at least one parent, student, nurse, or other health professional, PE teacher, school food service representative, board member, school admin, member of the public, and other community members as appropriate. We do have a district wellness committee but in policy, the membership is not spelled out. So by approving this policy, um, that will codify the membership of uh, said committee. Uh, there is language around nutrition guidelines, which uh, we are directed by the federal government through USDA. Uh, and in addition, the district will provide physical education opportunities for physical activity aligned with Missouri learning standards and GLEs and health and physical education in all grades. Board members, when it's a first reading, this is a chance for you to uh, take a look at language between first and second reading and bring any questions or concerns that you may have um, to a second reading, which would be at the business meeting in March. Uh, if we approve the second reading, uh, then this would be adopted as new policy ADF. This is considered the first reading. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Moving on to 3.2, board goals. Mr. Doug Bray is our Director of Communications. Well, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you? Sometimes whenever I start that out, I feel like it's like sort of a comedy routine. I don't want to go that way. Well, you hate it, we tell you. Too, <laughs> I grab the microphone and just go for it. But, um, I don't know if I have that many good jokes anyway. So, well, thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited to talk to you um, about your goals, the updates to your goals, and how we can help you achieve your communication goals like through our team. So um, before we start, we just like to talk about um, our vision and our mission. So um, our board communication goals helps fulfill our mission of working in partnership with our parents and our community. It also helps fulfill our mission to create a supportive environment so that students can experience success both here in Rittner and beyond in life. 
Um, and then our equity statement, uh, we want to make sure that we work with our community and encourage our community to speak up, ask questions, learn more, build bridges. So part of the communications goals about working with the board is to build bridges within the community and to like connect. And so it's all about connection. Sometimes um, it see, always seems so simple in terms of like those connections, but they're so powerful. And so um, we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. So this is the communications goal that the board agreed upon. And so um, our board will be known in this, uh, in the Rittner School District and throughout the region for effective governance and community services. So that's like the overarching higher goal. And then we talk about how to get to those goals. And so um, I've said it many times before and I've met with you, but we follow this um, like all the time in our world. And so it's the RPI process. And so it's research, planning, implementation, and evaluation. And so it's a continuing process. It's a cycle that we go through. Um, I will tell you that right now, we have about 15 communication plans going. At any given time, we have between like five and 20. And so you can imagine, like just we're constantly looking at communication plans, we're evaluating, we're seeing where we're at, because communications isn't always something that's easy to quantify. Um, it's sometimes hard to measure. And so you have to find those ways that you can measure uh, the communications data. And so, like I said, it's a continuing process. Um, by the way, you can stop me anytime and ask me any questions or anything like that, so feel free and need to, to keep going. So, um, you know, a part of the communication plans, um, making connections in the community and being visible in the community, is, it's, uh, it's huge. It's so vitally important to like the, the board and your role because it's your connection. And, you know, you're here and you're serving the community as the board, you're overseeing the school district. So those connections are huge. Um, and the more that our community sees you all out in the community and the more that they uh, make connections with you, uh, the more favorable that our survey data will be. That's, so that's like our measurable part of the goal. And so I actually have some survey data on the next slide that I can show you. And I'll tell you that your job performance rating is really good. Like you guys are like you're rocking it in terms of reports. So it's good. Like compared to other boards across the country, it's it's tremendous. It's good data. It's not something that we can't improve, but it's also something that's that's really good. So I would look at that as a positive. Um, you're between 2013 and 2023 in the past 10 years. You're always averaging in the 70 and 80 percent uh, range. I was looking back at some of the notes from 2013, which now makes me feel kind of older, but uh, <laughs> I was going through some old uh, some data as I was doing research for this presentation. Um, and the don't knows have even gone down over time. So if you look at 2013, don't know is um, people just didn't really know that much about the board. And now, um, you know, even though like the poor rating, the unfavorable, like went up a little bit, it's still that don't know. And it's, it's not an uncommon occurrence because people just don't have a connection. They may not see. And so it's great that you're out within the community and um, being able to make those connections. So um, between last year and this year on our survey, survey data, you've um, seen an 8% increase. But much like the Booter students, we're going to challenge you to keep increasing your, uh, your performance. So um, like I said, I was really enjoying listening to the, the survey, uh, the information about their survey data as well tonight. Um, like I said earlier, it seems so simple, but it's really powerful in the ways that you make connections with our families and our community members. Um, and so I'm um, just looking back at like the communication plans. I, uh, I bolded this, but a picture really is <coughs> worth a thousand words. Like, so you can say that we've been all over the place, we've been to different meetings, but if you push a picture out to the community and say, hey, so even if it's a selfie, saying, hey, so proud to be here, you know, at the blank event, um, it's, it's huge in terms of social media because people will share that and they'll see it in the community. And I know it seems really simple, but it is. It's something that's, uh, that's very powerful. Um, and so I can um, I encourage you, and we'll talk about like where we're at and the tools that you use to measure that. But I encourage you to like take pictures and to um, tell people about your story, even though it um, and it's kind of it's sort of a, an interesting thing for me because I like to be behind the scenes, and so it's a catch twenty two because I don't really like to be out there in front. But I really encourage you in your roles to make sure that you're always out there in front uh, and make sure that you share those images, even though it sort of feels uncomfortable. Even if you want to send the images to me or someone on our team. We'll share it for you. We'll be like, hey, you know, this is look at what's happening within the community. So don't ever hesitate to take photos. If you don't feel comfortable sharing them, you can always like rely on us to share and tell the good news within the community as well. Um, so also in terms of your communication plan, we talked about that. We talked about this and agreed upon this earlier. Um, you know, the evaluation part of it is like the number of, of events that you attend, and that's sort of how we're tracking it because we feel like that the more events you, the more contacts you make within the community the more people are going to see you out there and the more people are going to see you. As long as you have a positive interaction at the event, um, it'll be, so <laughs> I say that a little bit, but yeah, it'll be, um, it'll be positive for that as well. Um, and so looking back, um, 
to the next slide, which I was going to share with you. This is our goal, event tracking feedback form. And this is where I only have like kind of a little bit of bad news because we've only had two responses on the form so far. Um, but also the good news is, if you feel like that you would like to use this tool still, we can backdate it and put your events on there so we're able to track them more easily. So if you have other events, and I mean, for any contact you've made, I had, um, heard Vanessa talk about uh, connecting with the legislators. Like if you just um, put that information, you can feel free to send it to me. And I'll go to the next slide um, because I wanted to ask you, do you think this is a, like an effective way to, for us to track your goals? Or there will be something different that we can do um, to be able to track your goals, um, like your communication goals. And I guess the other question is, how can we track your, is, is this the right way to approach it? Because it seems like, based on the data over the past couple of years, it would be the right way to approach it and just to see sort of where we're at in 2024, um, you know, as we move forward. So I guess I've asked you a lot of questions all at once, and I'll just pause for a second. <laughs> so I, I will say to the earlier uh, statement you just made about the, the sharing things too, like, because I'm not as good, I, I get kind of, um, I have hesitation around posting like my own thing about the school district, because especially for my personal page, I don't know, I just don't ever, I'm like, oh, I want to say the wrong thing, oh, whatever. Um, but I, I have noticed that like, when I post things about, when I just repost the awesome things that you have, I just share it, word spreads so fast, I mean, people are like, almost immediately either texting me or commenting on it like that's awesome we need that i actually got somebody this week who said they took a screenshot and sent it to their board members saying look at what we're just doing we can do this so i just think that's good job i'm saying that to say kudos um i really enjoy just like resharing the things um as far as the what's most effective i would i i think in the moment for me like I need to think of I do need to do a better job of, of like taking pictures in the moment or at least even just sending maybe I can just send a direct message somehow like should I just email you or somebody on the team and say like this is what I'm doing <laughs> like you know what I mean or even just getting like a quick video or so I don't know I just I need something a little bit more instant than like because I hardly ever think of the Google form Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just, I'm just sharing <laughs> what my barrier is that I need. I think I need something that's a little bit more intuitive in the moment. I can quickly share with with the team. Um, so, any advice on that? I will take it. So, I will say I'm not a Google user. So, to even find the form and fill it out but it's like where is it at again mm -hmm. so I I just need a reminder or maybe showing where that is and how to use it and everything else would probably help me a little bit more mm -hmm. but <clears throat> also to your point too is if there is a place where we could just say hey we did this yeah. <laughs> it might be even okay. Dropbox yeah. 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 and then tell you exactly what <clears throat> That's the challenge for us as well in terms of like, because we're more than willing to like share all the information, share everything out in, the, in our channels. It's just you know, like having the information. It's something we struggle with all the time in general. Like people generally like will tell you, but you sort of have to pull it out of them a little bit. You know, like in terms of like whenever we're going after schools and finding good news, it doesn't always like, we have to sort of discover it along the way. And so I would say um, that we can definitely brainstorm about ways that we can do that. If you want to just ever send anything directly to me, we're actually really uh, we're really good at writing short stories about like things. And just if you give us any details, say, hey, I was in Jeff City on this day speaking to this person. So happy to be here, um, you know. Like, and then we can just say, hey, you know, we're in Jeff City. I'm one of our board members in Jeff City. You know, with the legislative session starting, you know, so we can we can actually fill in the gaps in, the, in terms of that as well. So um, I'm not sure if it would be better like to. I don't want to make Dr. Kilbride's any more complicated than the Eric DeQuinda, but I wasn't sure if there's a way that you would want to send it to like Dr. Kilbride or DeQuinda if you're out, you know, something like that. Just something to think about. I would try to like bridge the, the gap, you know, like sort of. I think that's like our. It seems like that's our main obstacle right now. Yeah, and I don't. Is there? I don't know if there's like a a general email address for comms. So I know, for example, like if somebody has an HR question, right? There's usually just like 
H like info at or whatever, and then you just like send in a general. Mm -hmm. If there was some sort of like even general email that's just kind of like the queue that can get dispersed, I think not even just for board members, but like teachers, everybody could use that and like again share the good news, like something that's going like you just mentioned the basketball game, right? Like nobody was there and you were there. Like you could have taken a picture and been like. You know, and then just send it to that e that kind of generic that general email address that we all know. And again, you can then you have then now you have all that content. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. know, you can just sparse through that. So, just a thought, maybe creating like just a general email. I will say there was a couple years ago that Lisa and I were at a one of the conferences and we attended this presentation, and they had a. Uh, school and like it was the good news section and people like even people in the community mm -hmm. were going out there and putting stuff out there and it was just a great place you know like some people were going out and saying hey today my kid came home and the teacher Miss Johnson was amazing today you know and like sharing the good news it was really kind of neat to see how they had used that and it was like they were sharing like you know basketball games or things like that were coming up and so it really kind of put it forefront to everybody it was like on their main page and it would just like scroll at the bottom that's really great i have to go back to my notes and find that presentation because i know lisa and i really enjoyed that one that's really great that's a great that would be a that would be like an awesome email address too just good news at rittner schools mm -hmm. and you know, spread that across the district to parents, like you said, like, even if they don't share pictures, if they can share their story, like, I know so many times I just want to give my teachers kudos, you know, so, man, like, this, this was really great, or I saw this administrator do this, or I saw this, you know, um, you know, food service helped in this way or whatever, so that, that would be really cool to, to spread it to the community. It's interesting too for, from our perspective, which is it's amazing. A lot of taking notes from the ideas. Um, there's also a, a strategy behind the way that you share information and the timing that you share information. So we study like the best times to share information. We also study like the amount of posts you want to do in like a single day or saying so because if you do multiple posts in one day, then you lower your retention rate. So you try to maximize everything. So you try to hit it just at the right time with the right group of people. And so there may be times where we will wait on something and send it out at a certain time because that's what it's so there may be some delays like in terms of like the way we send so we can definitely collect all the information though and, yeah. and share it which would be pretty awesome. So yeah. or it could yeah. be like teacher <laughs> Tuesday or something and then it's just pick you know it's just things we send out about teachers that mm -hmm. Tuesday you know, whatever, so. Yeah, well, cool. Doug, I have to agree that I've gone to different places in the in city councils and such, and, and yeah, I get home and I'm thinking about 101 different things and I forget to go and find this form and, and yeah, I filled it out, but now it's gonna take me a while to figure out where it is again. But if we could just send the information to you, here I was at, I was at this group, I was doing this, mm -hmm. and through an email or, or something, Something easy that I can do as I'm walking out of the place that'd be, be a lot more convenient. Okay, absolutely. We'll work on that. We'll work with Dr. Harlan and his team as well. I know we do have an address called RSD Info that we use as our main like information line, mm -hmm. uh, but also yeah, we'll we'll work through that because there may be there's a lot that comes in on that uh, on that particular email address. So um, it is. Um, if you if it's okay, I'll go to the next slide. But um, it's really really easy to talk about our district, like all the amazing things happening in our district. So just wanted to give you some conversation starters as well in this presentation. Like just, um, it's it's really awesome to be able to, and you know with the sharing. With you. And then also I was going to share with you just like a great example of board community outreach again. Just last was it last week? Wow, that's crazy. It seems like so much longer ago. Um, I guess it's one of those weeks. Um, just uh, sharing just like the amazing things that we're doing in the community. So. Um, in fact, if you have any questions, just thank you for giving me the opportunity to present to you and, and to work with you on this goal. It's it's always we really like our team on behalf of our team in communications. We really enjoy like working on the goal and sharing the good news. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night.
Okay, next up is 3.3, which is our Board of Education self-evaluation. And for this segment of this, I did ask and reach out to Ms. Jennifer Lonis if she would lead us in this segment of our meeting. Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> this month we had our, th we had three months in there, right? Three months of survey data? And so let me just kind of piece through here. Um, so I'll go to question eight. Everything else is looking at a high level. So question eight, the board identifies for the superintendent specific information needed to assist the board in making final decisions and just wanted to talk about that one, even though we're at the fully meets and, and meets expectations, just seeing if anybody had any feedback on that. Uh, I think at this point, <clears throat> with, with the, the experience and, and knowledge of the board, either in community events or getting good presentations on the academics that, that we can now just go deeper and dig dig deeper for those questions rather than asking well what does that mean or anything like that but i think we can ask more probing questions and, and more far-reaching questions of our of our staff now yeah. that we have ever before and one of the reasons i brought up that question specifically is because um, I want to make sure that like our community understands that we have a planning meeting the first Thursday of the month where all of our presentations most you know 95% of the time are presented to us at that point we do a lot of discussion during that time we ask a lot of questions we get those questions answered and sometimes adjustments are made before they're brought to us at this meeting here so I think it's just really important for people to understand that you know we don't just sit around somebody present to us and then we say yes or no based on that instant of a you know we you know may not have conversation that conversation has been had before and those are open meetings also so kind of my point on bringing that one up anybody else like to say anything about that one All right, so going through, um, so question 16. This one is about the board approves district policy and expectations for student programs. Um, we, again, went at meets and fully meets, but we were more, uh, we had a couple at the meets expectations. So just wanted to see if anybody had any feedback on that. And it's the board approves district policies and expectations for student programs. Anyone? I think we do a good job of it, but I will say that, you know, I'm very thankful for your connections to MSBA and to everybody that brings in those policies and the adjustments that we need and bring them forward to us. Um, and so we do a good job of really trying to understand what that means for our students and for our community. Yeah, for me, the student programs, so like the CBL, the competency-based learning, and us actually being a part of that conversation along with the other educators, I think is just, um, so important because we're all on board we're all understanding what's going on and we all know that that we have that need to be able to have greater expectations for our students in terms of um, their performance in the classroom altogether so. yeah and i think also greater expectations for the programs that we do approve you know i've i've sat in many meetings now where it's like oh we've had this program now for five years and it's stagnated what are we going to do differently this contract or what are 
So, you know, I, I think, yes, while we do approve the, and we understand what the programs are, I think one area maybe of like continued growth is just asking, digging deeper into that, like, not just data, but understanding, okay, is this program actually moving us closer to our goal of, of student expectations? Um, or are they just, or is the program just continuing to do the same? And I know it can be difficult because we have limited resources and limited programs, but um, so <coughs> then it's just getting creative on what are we asking the program to do? You know, how can they change, you know, kind of stir them a little bit so, um, but I am very thankful for all the connections that um, that everybody, you know, that you bring in and, and the rest of the team. So. You know, and everybody that has commented on this has said the question probably would be better if it said the board understands and then approves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we, we need to understand what we're what we're approving and. Mm -hmm then we can see the expectations of these programs. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Moving on to question 20. Thank you. The board ensures the district student service programs acts in compliance to support our students. And again, we're at meets and fully meets but there was more at the meets, just the meets level. I will say that I think that the way that we ensure is that we have the right people in place to make sure that the everything is happening with the compliance. You know, through, throughout the, the year, we have, we have a lot of service programs. We have a lot of things going on. Maybe, maybe we need to dig deeper and, and, and have more of the data-driven uh, reports at this point. How are these evaluations doing? How are these service programs doing? Tell us success tell us the good bad and the otherwise you know then how can we improve how can we improve them we always we always have to look at how can we improve these these things for each one of our students I mean, if we if we stay still then we're going backwards and that was the last one does anybody else have any other comments or would like to address any of the other questions that were out there Okay, all the questions and all the answers are posted out on our board step, so that concludes that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Moving on to the board meeting calendars, which is 3.4. So board members annually, uh, you are asked to approve the board calendar. Uh, so this uh, includes the dates, it includes the times, and it includes the locations. Just want to call out a couple of items about the board calendar for July 1, 2024 through June 30, 2025. You notice that the majority of the meetings are held here at the Administrative Center in the boardroom. Uh, the initial meeting, uh, July 11th, you know that there's no work session in July due to the July 4th holiday. Uh, the initial meeting July 11th would be at Brittner High School at 7 p.m. Uh, and that is uh, in connection with a uh, staff, uh, new staff meeting that we hold, uh, uh, we started holding last year. Uh, we would be continuing that this, uh, this coming year. Uh, you'd notice that the February work session, just as we did last week, would again be held at the Husky Support Center in uh, collaboration with community, uh, as well as with the pantry leadership. And then uh, we would be holding the uh, uh, May board meetings uh, at Rittner High School in conjunction with student recognition K-8. to uh, Start time is 7 p.m. Uh, and then we would be continuing, uh, continuing with the tradition of first Thursday work session, second Thursday uh, board business meeting. So this is the recommended calendar for board meetings for 24-25. Dr. Kilbride, is the recognition still at 6? 
And then the meeting is at seven. Uh, yes, for okay. for uh, student recognition in May, correct? Okay. Yeah, Just six p.m. to start. Usually finishes up about six forty-five. Yeah, gives us time to mingle and then go. Okay, thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the board calendar dates for the 2024-2025 school year. Second. That motion is second. Are there any other questions on this item? Hearing none, call the vote. Mrs. Lomas? Yes. Mrs. DeGarden? Yes. Dr. Alvin Wilson? Yes. Ms. Henriquez Pimbler? Yes. And I shall vote yes. That passes. We have a calendar. Yay. Let's move on. Mathnasium update, which is item 3.5. Dr. Deneen Stewart. been in partnership with uh, Mo for Mathnasium for a few years, two years, but I just want to introduce yourself first. Yeah, I'd like to, I've never had the chance to thank the, the board. I know that the administrators and Dr. Philbert talk quite frequently, but I want to thank you guys for allowing us to teach your kiddos. This has been a very fun, and I'm, sh I'm sharing this with my staff too, because we have 39 teachers that work for us and everybody's been able to touch some people here, and it's been fun. Um, it was a very new project um, for the company as a whole, nationally, actually. So they're, they're actually watching what we're doing here at Ritter School District, and we were just on a national call about two weeks ago. So it's, it's a lot of great things happening, and we appreciate um, you guys letting us service the children here. And Mo is the owner of Mathnasium at the Creek Core location, and uh, Husky Support Center, I mean, he has our students over there, and also St. Charles office, right? Okay. So our partnership that we have with Mathnasium is really aligned to our vision and mission with the goal of increasing student achievement in math for all of our students. And if we look at the mission for Rittner and Mathnasium, um, it's very similar. The goal is to meet students where they are, provide that support and also to expose them to grade level content um, or beyond for enrichment for students as well. And it's also, our partnership is also in line with our equity statement. Um, those relationships that um, Mathnasium has with our students. He was talking to a few students out in the hall. Um, just know some of our students have some really great relationships with them as well as the tutors that are in Mathnasium as well. So those relationships are really valued. Um, and then there's equitable access for all of our students to access grade level curriculum. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the presentation as well. So this presentation, we will review uh, the MAP and EOC data and really focusing on um, that, those opportunities in MAP for our students um, talk about tutoring best practices. Um, Mo will provide a description of Mathnasium, and we'll talk about the plan that we have for our students again. Um, Mo will talk about the results from pre and post testing with our students that are currently enrolled in Mathnasium, and then we'll talk about the response that we had, um, how we responded to parents with our last survey, which was last year. <coughs> So um, this is the data from 2022-2023 school year. Um, looking at our students' math achievement, we know it is an opportunity for our students to grow in math. This is also um, math, um, third grade through algebra two, and it's compared to the state um, proficient and advanced levels, so we can see that there is definitely some gaps and opportunities for our students in math. When we look at the research behind high impact tutoring, it, the, the research really talks about those relationships and how important that is, um, how that consistency 
Um, but tutoring is important to at least have three um, opportunities a week uh, to practice uh, and be tutored. Um, and then Mo is going to talk about some of the other high impact tutoring research areas. So I know that the formative assessments that you provide to, uh, for students with some pre and post yeah. assessments. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, very much like the school districts, Mathnasium is a data-driven company. Um, and so our learning is really based on the feedback from the students. That, that feedback happens to be questions right, questions wrong. So we're, we're a mastery-based curriculum, a little bit different than the school district. Um, we actually work with students at their pace to build up that fundamental. It may take a little bit more time in our method than it would be in the school district method, but once we do build a foundation, we see that the data showed over the last 20 years that uh, the acceleration in, in math learning. So we're constantly tweaking, learning, testing, and moving forward, and we do that with um, all your students here as well. And Mo and I talk all the time um, about the school curriculum. I share the school curriculum with him, and he mm -hmm. helps to support students um, with grade level content as well, which is very helpful. So just, I've shared this with the board before, just the really um, what high impact tutoring means, what it means and what it doesn't mean. So that consistency with that tutor is so important in those relationships and that we're taking data to inform our decisions. There's individualized plans that students have um, and that data helps to inform um, information for each student. So you, um, they take a test and the individualized plan is, is created for that student really based on their needs. Um, so there's a focus on acceleration and like I said, um, the goal is for students to come at least three times a week. That's um, well, I won't read the whole description of Mathnasium. Um, just suffice to say that it, the Mathnasium has become the largest company in the world in that space. Um, it, to, to give you an idea, the company that just bought Subway is the parent company of Mathnasium. Um, and those are, they have 30 or so odd companies like that. So it's very well funded, very well capitalized. Um, and, and, and bringing in as much talent as, as the company can afford to help our curriculum, to help the people in the field like me. Um, so it's, 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 it's a fantastic organization that are really doing great things and, and, and will only get bigger, I think, over the years. I think it's in nine countries um, right now and, and they're doing well. So you, you, you're in good hands with the, the parent company. Even if you're not in good hands with me, you're in good hands with the parent company. <laughs> And what I really like about Mathnasium is 25% of each lesson focuses on problem solving, which some tutoring companies really focus in on just rote memorization, um, and they um, really focus on problem solving as well. So when we think about the plan, I reviewed this before, but it just really compares the plan last year um, to the plan this year. Um, we know that our students have a choice to go to Husky Support Center or the Creek Core location. The goal is to have 200 students in the program to come three times a week, and those are the fees for the students that we pay. Um, <clears throat> so our, this plan is very similar to what we do nationally and what, what I do in St. Louis and St. Charles County. Um, we have a seven-month commitment. That's the only difference. Um, and that number really comes from the, the, the corporate data. Uh, on average, it takes 6.3 months for a student at any math phase, on average in the United States, to go from the level that they joined us to the next level up. And so that's why we feel it's really strong to make that commitment for families and, and students, because if you do one or two months, you may not get to where you need to be. So we, we love the fact that we can have a six-month commitment from your Rittner, Rittner families, and um, it, it is, it's done very well. Um, as Dr. Stewart mentioned, we are open to any middle school, Hake Middle School, Rittner Middle School, and Rittner High School children. So anybody that wants to come and needs our services is accepted um, up to 200, and we still have room um, to get to that number. Um, parents continue to bring the Rittner school children to our pre-core location one year later. 
there's a couple people in the back. Out of all this, we have two students in the Mathnasian program in the back. I don't know how many students we have here, but two of them are mine um, and have been for over a year. So, um, and they continue to drive out to Creve Corps um, to come to our center, or they can choose to come to Husky. Uh, can we um, bring in? Introduce yourselves. Introduce yourselves. I'm Reagan. Um, I was a student and then now I'm an instructor at yeah. our Husky Center. Nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> what, are you sleeping back there or are you awake? <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that they were going to be here. But we have two students, both who I saw tonight. Um, I was at both locations, and I saw both the, both the kiddos, but uh, they just happened to be there. So we did do something a little bit different this time, and I won't go into super detail in, in to, to save our time, but we've been working with base fundamental skills for the past six months with your Rittner students. We've now transitioned to adding in um, the topics from their curriculum here at, at both, uh, both the middle schools and the high schools. So Dr. Stewart has shared all the topics that are being covered in class. We went back in to each grade level, added all those topics in. Um, the reason there are three colors on this, um, on this slide is we've also incorporated some topics from the map testing program that uh, I know that you guys will go through in April, I believe, of this year. So we took some map testing topics that we felt were kind of critical, and we put those in there as well. And then the last color is Mathnasium recommended topics that we feel very strongly that, that children in 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 um, should benefit from. So we added our topics in and then mushed it into a learning plan. And so each individual grade has their own um, individualized learning plan. This is not done at Mathnasium. And they really didn't like me doing this, but I, I thought this was the best way to teach the kids um, and the best way to service all your needs um, here at the school district by adding bits and pieces of, of everything. So that's what it looks like. We've got incentive program. I think some of our kids may just come for the food, and I don't know about the math. Um, but we do want to incentivize kids. I know the school district does it as well. Um, you know, we do this, this happens to be a picture at your Husky Support Center right up the street. Mm -hmm. um, we stock it with snacks. We try, I try to be good about not putting too much junk in there. Um, but junk does motivate children. <laughs> I found that out over the last eight years of doing this, that junk motivates children to do math. And also prizes motivate children to do math. So I will pretty much buy anything somebody wants and I'll run to the store, I'll go to Amazon and I'll put it in there and sure, surely they complete their math lessons because they want the, um, the speakers or the pillows or the, we have all sorts of toys um, that we can buy. We have a whole bunch of gift cards too that we give out. Amazon, GameStop, Xbox, all that. To incentivize the kids to do the work, you'll get something at the end. And it, it really does work and, and they do a lot of work for it and, um, and we're happy to, to spend the money. It's money well spent. Uh, so these are the results. Um, so we did Mathnasium assessments pre-test, which is when, when they joined us, and then obviously we teach, and then if we're doing our job correctly, there should be a positive growth. Um, we do this with all, all our students at all our locations. Um, I'm happy to see these numbers here um, at Rittner. RHS, as you know, is Rittner High School. And so we, we grew on average 26.5%. Uh, this is about three and a half to four months worth of work. Um, so the numbers would be even pronounced if we went all six months. Um, RMS is, is your Rittner Middle School and Hake is HMS. And so you see, I'm glad that we see growth in, in, every, different, in every school. Some schools are a little bit different and, and that could be data items. Um, but I think the data is, this data is from at least 50, 50 to 60 percent of the population that attested on the date that we generated this. Subsequently, we probably had another 20 percent of, of your population test, and we'll update those results and send them to you like I normally do. Um, but I suspect the data is still going to show 
that it's positive growth. So I'm glad that the people are learning. Thank you for learning. <laughs> this is just a graphical representation of the pre and post. Um, you want the red, the red bar, I want the red bars higher than the blue bars. Um, and that's what it shows, and so we will keep plugging at it to make sure that it stays that way. Um, this is your pre-test and post-test scores um, by school. I, we, I include this because I have the data and I'm able to, to break it out by school. Um, I don't know if there is differences between middle schools and, and high school, but we just broke it out for, for you guys this way. So in the survey that we gave last year, um, Mo and I talked about the opportunities and the strengths. Um, we solved the problem with the commute um, by having it at Husky Support Center. And I know Mo can speak a little bit more about the more progress updates for parents. Yeah, so we've been, we received the feedback from the survey and um, we've been sending more emails on, for example, that email on the new customized learning plan that we're gonna be initiating this semester, we spelled out we spelled that out in an email. We didn't go into a whole lot of depth, but we just said that right now we will be introducing topics that your children will see in this spring, um, as well as we shared all the the pre and post results of every child. The parents should have gotten that email and say, "Hey, this is where you started. This is where you ended. This is where your growth is." Um, so we continue to be as open as we can. Um, we have a new texting ability now, so we're able to text the student, the, the parents as well, um, with updates on what's going on in class and things like that. So um, we took the par parent survey to heart and we will do as much communication as we need to make sure that people are comfortable. So we, we talked about the celebration of barbecue last year at Norman Myers Park um, and we will have another one this year. Thank you to Mo for um, subsidizing that and also barbecuing yeah, all the food <laughs> for that uh, but those relationships are really important so we'll have one again uh, this summer yeah I'd love to see some board members there uh, I'm sorry I missed you guys so I was cooking um, but <laughs> yeah, right in our cave to it, yeah but we'd love to do another one here in the spring for for the, for the families um, in the program just let us know when yeah, we will do it any questions? I don't have a question. It's more of a statement. Yeah, so board members, I just, you know, with your support, being able to bring Mathnasium to the Husky Support Center, you know, so much of our work is trying to eliminate obstacles to access, you know, for opportunities for kids. And Mathnasium, like other businesses, they have criteria for where they would locate. So with Mo's work, we're able to locate a satellite branch of Mathnasium here where it didn't previously exist. Uh, so I just think that's, again, eliminating an obstacle to accessing Mathnasium, which we learned last year. A number of our families struggled to get out to the Creve Core location. Now it's right in the middle of the district. As Mo said, we still have some vacancies to get uh, up to that 200 uh, spot, uh, but there's data behind the work. Uh, there's data that's showing that when kids come, when they come consistently, whether it be during the week or Saturday, Sunday hours, there's three hours Saturday, three hours Sunday that kids can drop in. Two hours on Sunday, three hours on Saturday. And so a lot of flexibility. It's right in the middle of the district. We're working to eliminate obstacles to kids getting this high dosage tutoring. So thank you and thanks to all. Thank you. How many students are we at? At both locations together? I think we're, uh, it fluctuates because we had three families inquire yesterday. Um, I think we're at about 140. Um, and, and people have been with the program and, and stopped. And then you, it's, a, it's an open enrollment. We have a Google form um, that uh, when parents sign up on the, um, on the website um, uh, at the Husky Center, it populates right onto that Google form. And so I look at it every day and I see some new families and we reach back out. And so it's a continually rolling, kind of rolling enrollment, a little bit different than school. We just take people as they, as they need it um, through, our, through our term. So it works out very well. But I, I do, I would like to see more, more kids there if you know, we could get some families. Is it, is it a matter of letting more and more people know? Or, or does everybody know when they're? We have 
We did a video. We have sent out communication. We have sent out flyers. We've sent them to the schools. We have been to open house. We, um, we can continue to do that. Um, but we really have communicated very well about this program. I, I think part, we had this conversation too. Board members also, I think, I think it's moving from asking to telling in some cases. Yes. We have spots that are open. Uh, we have students that data shows need additional support in math. Um, you know, we, we've done the ask. It needs to get to the targeted tell of we've got a spot. It's open tomorrow. What can we, what else do you need to make sure that you get there? And so it's that one-on-one -on -one conversation that we have to go to next at our secondary schools. And do we have it bilingual? So the Spanish-speaking students are also have that opportunity? We do have Spanish-speaking students. We have, we don't have, uh, we have one staff member that has a little bit of Spanish, and we have a hall monitor that has a um, full amount of Spanish. Um, the website has English and Spanish on it, so they can at least look at it. Um, we're somewhat restricted on the language, but we have a, a fair amount of Spanish-speaking kids there, so I think it has a hand for it, I don't yeah. think. Well, they haven't told me. One of the hall monitors is a Spanish teacher at one of our schools, actually, mm -hmm. and she helped call some of our Spanish-speaking families to try to invite them and mm -hmm. encourage them to come. And I think you saw some response from that, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, I have a question about, do you, do you just uh, teach one method of getting an answer to a problem? I mean, it's like, this is the way you do it, and that's it? Or do, are there options? Do we have options of getting answers in different ways? That's a good question. Um, our, our motto or philosophy uh, way back when, when the founders started 20 years ago, was teach math in a way that makes sense. I think it's on the website. Make, teach math to the student as a the way that it makes sense to them. So um, we have the luxury of looking at every school district. I have the luxury of looking at every school district in St. Louis County. I see all the homework. I see everything that's coming from Ladue to... But we have a certain cur uh, curriculum that we feel, based on what we see in, in, the, in the nation, this is the most tried and true. But if you learn it another way, if you can understand your teacher at, at Ridner, so be it. Um, we can adjust to that and make sure that you learn it your way. So we're not beholden to ours. There's, ours is a starting point in our curriculum. Our curriculum is written out of California. It's a, it's a, really, it's a really interesting curriculum, if you guys ever want to take a look at it. Um, it almost seems childish in the writing, I mean, these kids know. But it's really powerful because it comes at it from their point of view, not from our point of view. So we feel that that's a good place to start, but if they need to understand something a different way or they learn it from the teacher, from the mother or father, different, that's fine, that's fine with us. We want to make sure that they understand the underpinnings of it. I'd just like to ask one more question. When we look at the growth and everything, I know this is based on like the testing that happens within Mathnasium, but for the Rittner side, are we looking at anything as far as what that, what our testing looks like for them? We are. Um, we're also um, looking at the grades. Um, I was talking to Mo about, you know, some of the grades that I'm seeing mm -hmm. that some of the students are struggling, some of the students who are struggling, and um, some of it is students are not consistently coming. Um, those students are not really seeing the growth. Uh, the grades are not really showing growth. Um, and some students, there's some like gaps, some very wide gaps to um, get to grade level. So uh, that growth is going to, it's going to take time. It's just going to take time. Yeah. So that's what we're seeing when we went through kind of some grades and um, data. That's what we're saying. That's why I like that we look at growth and not where they fall. I would rather see the growth of a student than did they hit proficient and exceed. Totally understand that. I agree. As we move forward with this, how does, how does this then align with our competency-based learning? So those conversations moving forward. So competency-based learning allows us to be able to speak on these are the specific standards. 
because an A is an A, a B is a B, and all the standards kind of get rolled up into that. But being able to communicate around the specific standards that students have not mastered yet, sharing that information with Mathnasium Hall and the team have shown, like you said, they're willing to customize the experience to Rittner, arm, being armed with which standards are areas of concern and sharing that will only further tailor. Yeah, and even to that, that point just was brought up on the national call because we, we were doing, and I shared that slide, the three-color slide with every other Mathnasium in the United States last week. And the director of education said, we need to look at this as a way going forward so that if a school district brings an issue, uh, in the past it was, this is our way of doing things and we'll do it. Well, it may be different in one school district here or Detroit or California. And so how can, the, the IT people are now working on solutions to figure out how to do more customization within the program. And so they've given us a, a big commitment to what we're doing is, I think, the right thing. Um, it's just very, very new. It's, you know, the company's only been around for 20 years, but what we're trying to do here with, with that slide um, has never really been done. And so, but I think, I think the feedback was, it's a smart way to do it. Let's figure it out so that we can help more um, school districts. Very good. I'm glad we could help you grow, too. Yeah, thank you. I've learned a, I've learned a ton. Um, I, I didn't know about all this. I, you know, our, our business is different because my center in Creve Cora has six school districts that run through there. Um, I don't just favor one. You know, I look at all of them and interact with the administrators and the principals. But here I've really dug in really, really deep um, with yours. And so I've learned a lot more than I could learn from my interactions with the other school districts. But there's not as deep as this one. And so I'm able to share some of that information with some other people. And, and I've shared it with the entire network. Um, and so I think something good is going to come about from this experience over the last year and a half. The CEO personally gets on um, Zoom calls with me. Jazz, what's going on in Ritter? Like, why are you worried about it? You're in California. <laughs> but literally, he, he, he knows. He, 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 Mike Davis will visit uh, at Husky Support Center at some point. He, he, said, he said, I will stop by next time I'm flying over Missouri. I want to see the your Husky Support Center thing you talk so much about. Uh, so it is very, it's, yeah, so I do appreciate that. It, for me, it's, it's very interesting uh, to try this twist on the business as opposed to the, what we normally do day to day um, mm -hmm. by helping a particular entity like you guys and how can I do that best. And, and I'm still learning and we're still trying to figure it out and, and it's been fun and, and we'll continue to do so if, if you'll let us. Stick with Dr. Stewart, she'll make you an expert on CBO. <laughs> I, I can learn. I can learn. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Next up then is our construction updates. Mr. Michael Smith. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. present uh, this month's uh, construction update. Of course, the operation uh, department supports the district vision and mission, specifically by uh, supporting the actual physical environment that enables every student to be successful. Operation department also supports the equity statement by ensuring that resources are allocated so every student gets uh, what they need and what uh, a basic need of all students and staff uh, are safe facilities to ensure a great educational experience. Uh, this month I will be discussing uh, gym facility and bleacher repairs and uh, a hopeful replacement of our a bucket truck. Uh, as far as uh, our gym uh, facility and bleacher repairs, Bolte Company <coughs> Uh, recently performed inspections and preventative maintenance on uh, many of on all of our uh, facilities and bleachers uh, and to ensure the safety of our students there are additional repairs that must be made a lot of those repairs are routine and not very costly but there are some uh, repairs that are more extensive uh, broken down by facility uh, the soccer bleachers uh, have some uh, 
bleacher repairs that need to, to take place out there. The softball and baseball bleachers, uh, those are not repairable and need to be replaced. The question was asked last week about um, some type of guards or uh, skateboarders. For our skateboarders. Right, exactly. So I reached out to Bolte. There's nothing that they provide. I did a little bit more research and saw uh, some things that you can attach to them, but then we're drilling into our bleachers. Um, and uh, the, everything that I've seen has a sharp metal edge that people would be sitting on. So I'm a little fearful of that, but we'll continue to look to see if there's something that would work on that. Um, at Moore Field, uh, the, field uh, the bleachers there, uh, there's some significant repairs uh, to all of the bleachers. That's both the visitors and the home field bleachers. Um, some additional uh, facilities at Rittner High School needing repairs, and of course a little bit at Rittner Middle School. Uh, a little bit uh, taking place at Ivland and Marion, a little bit more at uh, Hake, and quite a bit more repairs needed at Uh, some pictures uh, of uh, some of the gym facilities that are in need of repair. Uh, you can see that you know these uh, um, facilities are well used. Uh, we do repairs every year, uh, but here are some examples of repairs that need to be made uh, right away so we can ensure the safety of our students. A few more uh, examples of repairs that are needed. and some pictures of the bleachers uh, that are some of the bleachers that are in need of repair. Bolte recommended uh, all of that previously mentioned repairs and replacements at a cost of $78,905. Uh, Bolte participates in community pricing, which means that competitive bidding is already completed. And therefore, I am recommending uh, that the Board of Education accept the quote of $78,905 for repairs, repairs and replacements uh, needed in our gym facilities and on our bleacher systems. And I'm more than happy to answer uh, questions. Is that, is that going to be a different motion than the, the truck? Was that all? It's two separate motions. Two separate, okay. Sorry. I do have a question, just yes. real quick. Do we have any bleachers anywhere else that I mean did you go through yes okay yeah bleachers at every single facility whether they're outdoor or indoor okay. facilities yes. thank you You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the quote of seventy eight thousand nine hundred five dollars for repairs and replacements needed in our gym facilities in our on our bleacher systems second a motion and a second. Are there any other questions on this agenda item? Hearing none, we'll call the vote. Dr. Alvin Wilson? Yes. Ms. Henriquez Pimper? Yep. Mr. Gardner? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Yes. I'll uh, vote yes. Thank you all. Carry on. Uh, next, I'd like to just discuss our bucket truck. Uh, it's a 1977 model. We've uh, uh, done repairs over the years, but those repairs have been more frequent uh, and parts for that truck are, are not readily available. The truck was out of service for several months during the last repair, and even though uh, repairs have been made, we do have significant issues with the hydraulics. Bucket's, bucket truck is currently broken down, it's not starting, and there's a burning smell when you try to start it. There is our bucket truck. Well, no, that's that's a classic. It is a classic. That's a classic. That's, a classic. that's, that's vintage. It really is. Wasn't it starting last week? So it just. What's that? Was it starting last week and then it got? Uh, it was starting the week before last week. So. Oh, so and, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I remember you saying. Um, so we are exploring newer pre-owned models of bucket trucks that we believe are going to meet our needs. Um, the funds would come from uh, uh, real estate taxes that came in higher than originally budgeted and, and expected. 
Uh, it's a one-time purchase. Um, and uh, the last bucket truck is uh, 45 years old. So if the newer bucket truck can get even, even close to that, it would be a terrific one-time purchase. <coughs> Uh, most models uh, we've researched are between eighty and hundred thousand dollars. New models are upwards of two hundred thousand. We don't believe that a, a new model is, would is necessary at this time for us. And this is also a safety feature. One hundred percent. Yes. Yeah, it's very much needed. Our people that use it don't need to be using the forty. Seven-year-old because they are they're up in the air and yeah. out over you know long distances you know and and the bucket truck is, is held up fine but we do want them to be in a safe uh, they, and it needs to work and needs to work yeah. you did show I guess different sizes or, or <laughs> ones that reach farther out uh, they really actually reach pretty close to right at what, what our current the truck reaches out. We were looking for a 45 foot reach, uh, which is what our current bucket truck is. Okay. And that will get to most everything that we need uh, throughout the district. Right. So we'd like to test drive several models in order to select. Um, so we're currently unsure of that actual cost. We're hoping between eighty and hundred thousand dollars. But I am recommending the board approve the purchase of a pre-owned bucket truck at a cost not to exceed one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. And I'm more than happy to ask, answer additional questions. I don't have any questions. I think we need to go ahead and make a motion to approve the purchase of a pre-owned bucket truck at a cost not to exceed one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Second. So a motion and a second. Are there any other questions? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, call the vote. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Gard? Yes. Mrs. Enriquez Pimblett? Yes. Dr. Alvin Yes. Uh, well, yes. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Well, nice. Thank we you. put it in the parade next year, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> the old one or the new one? <laughs> <laughs> the old one. Do I have to call it We can have the new one towing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on. Oh. Sorry, couldn't resist. I know. Good evening, Dr. Lucas. Good evening, Portman. Tell us something good. I'm here with personnel items 1 through 57. Open for any questions or comments you may have, and ultimately asking for your approval. Can we do something like special for number 8? Okay. Typically, you have a Celebration in the department. Yeah. yeah. About number twenty. It's kind of kind of changed the dynamics. Of things, isn't it? I'm sorry. It's kind of changed the dynamics. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to change the dynamics. We believe that it will um, assist us moving forward with um, those duties of that new assignment and we will strategize to uh, fill the needs at the previous position and that person will also assist in training up for the needs in the previous position. We're uh, implementing a new student information system. This person in position is critical to that. Mm -hmm. Also with the Empower tool for capturing evidence of student learning uh, and we also know that core data and MSIP 6 accreditation, this role uh, plays, this person in this role plays a significant role in that, so we want to make sure that we've got, we're, we're, we're well suited well into the future to address those concerns. So did, did he, did he come forward and ask to vote yes. there, or did he, did we approach him? He, he has expressed interest, um, okay. the position was posted, he applied, and it was a, a process, and he was ultimately selected. Not complain about the choice. It's just I know. I, I, I didn't see that one coming. A, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, 
Hold on, I gotta get down to the number. Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Oh, there it is. I'd like to make a motion to accept items number one through fifty-seven as presented. Second. A motion and a second. Call the vote. Ms. Marinkas Pimblett? Yes. Dr. Alvin Wilson? Yes. Mr. Garden? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Lotus? Yes. I'll vote yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. At this point, we are now at 3.8, which is board member comments. Board members, do we have any good news? News? Anything of notes? I can say one thing. I'm excited about the R9 project. Mm -hmm. um, so, really interested in helping that grow with uh, the different cities. So. I had a, I have a goal of making it to every city council meeting within our district. Yes. I have two more to go. I'm leaving Overland for last because I need to talk to them about a lot of things, present to them good things, and uh, Edmondson is the other uh, city. <coughs> I'll coordinate that with the mayor since I know him well and everything. I'll, I'll go to their meeting, and I like going to these city council meetings because I like telling good news about Ritner. And God knows there's, there is like every time we turn around, there's something exciting to tell them. And you, you just see the expression on their face and, and asking questions about different issues that we bring up. Last thing that was a big, big thing was our, our buses, our new buses, and, and a grant for that. And talk to them about how many uh, people that we employ here in Ridner and, and everything. And they're just, they're all very grateful and thankful that they're getting this information because they, like us, meet with their people, their constituents, and now they can go out and tell something new and good about their area. So I would encourage everyone, if you have time, Brenda has been so diligent, nice to post all these meetings on our calendars. And I look at that and, and all of a sudden I'm telling my wife, I'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> And she's like, yeah, okay. And, and you get to have a good conversation with them. Uh, and once the more and more we get to know them and the more they get to see us, I think the better that relationship and that R9 project that uh, Mayor Little is driving will, will come together. I, I think I'll be, they'll be happy to say that next February that meeting might have to be in a different room if we if we get more and more of these people. And that would be just a wonderful problem to have. So I look, I look forward to that. So that's all I have. If anybody has anything else? I mean, Ms. Kimbla, it seems like you're, you're traveling the state. That's, that's so awesome. Yes, and learning a lot. Um, but I think the biggest thing that I'm I'm realizing is that, you know, the issues or the, the things we talk about here in our district is not just here, you know, it's in rural communities. I met a few folks who are actually running for their state rep office because they are just so tired of the status quo, just continuing to talk about the same problems and not actually working towards solutions. So. I feel hopeful in the direction of public education. I think, you know, as unfortunate as it is that we have so many uh, kind of negative, um, you know, legislation coming out or, or things that are just going to continue to compound that, it, this issue that we have of perpetual underfunding. I think it's also drawing a lot of momentum and energy from young people. Um, because they want better for themselves and for the future generations. So, and they're asking questions, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm very hopeful. There's a few programs too, which I, I wasn't prepared to speak on it tonight, but there are a few um, like youth advocate programs that I learned about this week. 
So I want to get more information on that, but I think it would be because I would love to bring students to, to lobby day, to advocacy day. You know, I'd, I'd love to have students there either be able to give testimony or be able to speak on these things and really show when they hear from their student from the future um, that that has a different kind of effect. So, um, but yeah, just taking in a lot and really learning a lot about Missouri. So. Awesome. I will, I will conclude with, I did go to the Equity Symposium in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. I met people oh, from nice. Maine all the way to Seattle. And to, to confirm what she just said, we, would, we all share the same problems, the challenges. How they meet them is what we can come together on. There were some very good sessions in there, and I'd like to have a few minutes during our next work session to bring those to you. It was worth going. There was a little over 500 people there. And uh, I'd encourage everybody to go next year with me. It's in January. You don't have to move. You go from the airport to the hotel, and when you're done at the hotel, you go back to the airport. Where is this? Washington, Washington D.C. It's a Marriott Marquis on, I don't know, whatever, 10th Southwest something street. Tell the tank to get right here. <coughs> So it was good. It was very informative. Moving on to our consent agenda items, 4.1 through 4.8. I'd like to make a motion to approve consent agenda items 4.1 through 4.8 as recommended. Second. We have a motion and a second on consent agenda items. Call the vote. Mr. Garden? Yes. Ms. Lonis? Yes. Dr. Alvin Wilson? Yes. Ms. Enriquez Pimbler? Yes. And I shall vote yes. We now have our consent agenda done, mm -hmm. and we will move on to closed session. I'd like to make a motion that we move into closed session for State Statute 610.021. Second. We have a motion and a second. We'll call the vote. Mr. Rinkus Pimbler? Yes. Dr. Alvin Wilson? Yes. Mr. Garden? Yes. Ms. Lonis? Yes. We now vote yes. Uh, let's take a five-minute break, come back, and we'll keep going.